What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to talk about Scream 7 in this video here today. This is going to be a theory dedicated to the character of Sydney Prescott since she is going to be returning in the seventh entry to this iconic franchise. Sydney is back. Nev Campbell is back, I should say. After having a couple of endings in this franchise so far, Sydney's piece is once again going to be interrupted. So let's just entertain how this can work. What if Scream 7 has a cult that targets Sydney in her hometown. Cause again, I've talked about how it doesn't make sense for her to be living in Woodsboro anymore. So we need to bring the action to her. You can say it's been one year or two since Scream 6. Gail has gotten close to Sam and Tara as a mother figure. So that's how you can still keep five and six relevant. Sam and Tara have continued to shun Christina, but have rekindled the relationship with their dad, who we also ne never met. Sydney is working at a high school in this town. Let's say it's in Seattle. She's a guidance counselor for the local teens at the school. A true crime series about the Ghostface Killers has been a viral sensation for the last six months or so since its release. Mickey Altieri became the most popular one of the bunch due to the series exploring Mickey's life prior to Windsor College, his victims in his hometown, how he met Mrs. Loomis, which we learned about in Scream 2, and other details we never learned after Scream 2, because remember, Mickey was described as being an active killer. So I want to try to give Mickey his flowers for being one of the more compelling killers in this franchise, arguably the most compelling. Anyway, ghost face attacks have been happening around town, but Mark convinced Sydney to stay despite a lot of these attacks being against her students. His logic is none of the attacks, while they've been against her students, they don't seem targeted towards Sydney specifically. So why, why run and hide like they did during six? Sydney becomes more understanding of his perspective and of course decides to stay as the attacks continue to show signs that it isn't about her or her family and it's just ghost face attacks that have nothing to do with her. So she becomes more accustomed or more content with Mark's suggestions. That is until our opening scene. So we are shown the Kincaid house it's dark outside, very eerie, and then we hear the phone ring, but a tiny hand picks it up, introducing us to one of Sydney's kids, who gets told your pizza, pizza is here, so it's not Ghostface as audiences would expect, already, already going to be pulling the rug out from under them. The child runs to get Sydney, and we see Sydney take the pizza inside, shut the door, while the Kincaids are shown having a nice time together inside of their home, in the shadows that, that we see that they don't see. Ghostface is shown lurking inside their home. Later that night, Sydney and Mark are sleeping, but a POV shot will show us someone walking up the stairs, walking towards their bedroom, up until a knife is raised right above Sydney, who is sleeping at, the, at this point in time. Now, the floorboard ends up creaking, causing Sydney to wake up and see Ghostface about to stab her, barely getting away from Ghostface's attempts in the process. Mark goes to get his gun, but the killer has already anticipated this and disposed of it earlier before night fell. Mark is left with no other choice but to defend his wife by other means. This sequence in the bedroom between Ghostface, husband and wife can go on until Sydney and Mark kill this person. So borrowing some of the scrapped ideas from Scream 4, Ghostface is revealed to be one of Sydney's former students. That's the person that was in her home trying to kill her just now. Sydney's phone will ring after this, and it's Ghostface this time. They say the iconic hello, Sydney line, and Sydney goes, what do you want in a very defeated and here we go again like fashion? Ghostface says, guess what I have, before chuckling as Mark and Sydney make their way to the girl's bedroom one by one to discover one of them has been taken. Ghostface ends the call by saying, looks like it always does go back to the original Hunt Sid. Then they hang up. A month has gone by, since this opening attack and the accomplice is just laying low to to fuck with sydney fuck with sydney and mark at this point they also have no idea this is more than just an accomplice it's a cult like i mentioned sydney has started attending group therapy sessions since she has been a mess emotionally over her missing child she's gotten close to this woman at the group named helen who says she knows what she's going through because she lost two of her daughters a few years back. She shows Sydney pictures of them as teens and everything. So Sydney has a little friend during this movie besides Gail, who's going to come to town eventually. The killings, of course, inevitably start back up with several students at her school being killed. A young female student named Laura, who visits Sydney frequently because of what's happening to her friends. 
She visits Sydney frequently during her office hours. Laura can serve as our secondary protagonist. Kirby Reed and her partner are requested in town for assistance since she's FBI and very familiar with Ghostface. A big discussion and theme throughout this film could be true crime and whether it has more good or bad influence on today's youth. And while the events that are unfolding on your screen are going to let you decide what the answer to that is. Gail comes to town after her producers request she cover the story since Ghostface brings in the ratings like we know Ghostface does. <laughs> Gail's arrival is exactly what the cult wants since she is the secondary target to Sydney. All of this will build to a finale where Sydney's friend Helen is taken out by three ghost faces while visiting Sydney and Mark at their home to comfort them. She's not killed or anything, but they abduct her and take Helen to her own house. Sydney gets a call with Ghostface saying, you want your daughter? Come to this address with Gail and leave Mark at home with the other girls. Oh, and tell Mark if he calls for backup, I'll kill his little girl. Sydney and Gail go to the address, which again is Helen's house. She's got this wonderful, spacious living room. Think Milton's mansion from Scream 3, but not as gorgeous. Helen is tied up in a chair and Ghostface steps out telling Sydney and Gail to stop right there before they can even try to untie Helen. Three more ghost faces are behind Sydney and Gail. One instructs her to go inside or go into the next room where her student Laura and Sydney's missing child are shown being tied up too except the child is dead and it would appear to have died from starvation so I'm trying to make this gut-wrenching for Sydney I'm gonna have to go there since she can't have her peace so she's gonna lose one of her kids Sydney breaks down and ultimately asks why they are doing this and the ghost face that has been speaking so far says there are a few reasons one, they are trying to become the most memorable group of killers to ever terrorize Seattle because they are true crime fans hoping to be immortalized like the killers from the Ghostface docuseries. They mentioned, and here's the second thing, they mentioned that after a little convincing, they figured why not go after Sydney? because how iconic would it be to say you killed Sydney Prescott and the person who basically helped make Ghostface popular, Gail Weathers. Then the third thing, this cult was inspired by Mickey Altieri. Mickey is the ghost face they look up to the most and want to outdo. It'd be poetic to finish what he started in a way by offing the two women who killed him, Sydney and Gail. So they are also hoping to be caught just like Mickey was. And then the fourth thing, shout out to you, Killjoy Jake, for this one. Mark Kincaid specifically ruined this ghost face's life, the, the ghost face that's speaking during the reveal. They ruined this ghost face's life a few years ago when he planted evidence to get them arrested for a crime he didn't commit. It ruined their life, but at least now in their eyes, they'll be going down for something that they did do. Now, none of these people take their mask off just yet, by the way, because I would want to try to plant this seed of doubt in the viewer's head that the killers aren't going to be revealed. Plus, while they are explaining this to Sydney, Kirby comes in, shoots two of the killers in the room dead, leaving just the two left. A brawl will ensue in true scream fashion until we're down to one ghost face to the one ghost face that has been talking this entire time. By this point, they have revealed themselves. Laura and Helen are being set free, and Sydney's daughter is about to be set free too. Ghostface says to Kirby while they're trying to undo the dead body of Sydney's daughter, they say to Kirby, you still don't get it, do you? Kirby says, get what? And Helen is shown holding a gun to Kirby from behind saying, drop it. He begins urging Kirby and Gail, Kirby, Gail, and Sydney and Laura to move it into the next room. Helen is in fact, Christina Carpenter. Those pictures she showed Sydney earlier were not of her actual children, clearly. Christina reveals she paid these newly dead college students that we find out most of these cult members are that are obsessed with true crime. She paid them to target Gail and Sydney. Why? One, because Sydney has everything she wants, a husband and loving daughters. She admits they weren't supposed to die, but this will do too, in reference to the cult members that are now dead. She blames Sydney for why she doesn't have that because if Sydney didn't kill Billy all those years ago, she'd be off with him right now. Sam wouldn't be against her and she wouldn't have had to stick with Tara's dad, who she considers to be one of the worst men out there. Gail is on Christina's list because Gail has been replacing Christina's role in Sam and Tara's life by acting as a mother figure to them. And Christina doesn't like that. Christina plans to kill the remaining survivors here. Let her partner, who again wants to be caught, take the fall for all of it and get close to Mark so she can have what she wants, a family. Obviously, she's not going to get away with it, but that is how I would do with Scream 7 to give Sydney some purpose, still make Scream 5 and 6 relevant, draw in the cult angle finally, talk about true crime, 
And yeah, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.